Leanne and James live with their two young children in Hammond, a historic community in the municipality of Maple Ridge. Leanne's grandfather worked at the town's large cedar mill and built the house they now own. Like many heritage buildings, it's not very energy efficient. So they set out to change that and ended up on a much bigger journey. Leanne's grandfather you know, built this house and, which has heritage value and it has the value of the materials and the value of the work and energy that's been put into building it. Uh, and we wanted to make it more livable and we wanted to protect it. I was really surprised at how difficult it was to find good information on making your house more energy efficient. The energy auditor comes to your house, gives you a list of recommendations. Here's what you should do to your house. Call me when you've done it and we will energy audit you again and I will help you with the grants. It's like, well, thank you very much, but I still have to find someone to do it or I have to do it myself. And it turns out that that's not easy. And uh, I always uh, find that really crazy that that should be a lot easier. Everybody would want to do that, wouldn't they? Instead of giving up, James and Leanne started looking around to find out what other people had done in other parts of Canada. I found out about a project called the Now House Project in Ontario, where they uh, decided to take a 60-year-old house, a post-World War II house, and retrofit it to net zero. So they did one house and they, they got to net zero on that house. 60-year-old uh, house. So it's not a technical problem. Then they took five houses and they did slightly different things to each house in Windsor, Ontario, and they chose the one that was the most efficient in terms of how much money they put in and how much energy savings they got out. And then they did 95 the same way. And they got the price tag down from $85,000, which was the first one, to $11,000 per house. Inspired by the Now House example, James and Leanne wanted to see if they could do something just as ambitious in Maple Ridge. Uh, Maple Ridge community-wide net zero home energy retrofit project. That's the name that we have for it right now. What's the game plan for all these houses in my neighborhood that are older than 1970? And it's interesting too because we talked to some people and, and they're like, well, my house is only nine years old, but it was really poorly built. <laughs> and so we could definitely use the retrofit, yeah. energy retrofit to save money. I mean, we hear how high some people's heating bills are and it's just crazy. Many of us want to live in more energy efficient homes, but if we can't afford to pay for upgrades and retrofitting, or if we rent our homes, it's not so easy. Um, part of my motivation for all of this is, can we not reinvent the wheel? That there are individual homeowners uh, looking at their houses, and some of them are rich, and they retrofit their house, and it's a beautiful thing, and it's geothermal, and it's solar, and it's everything, and it produces more power and, and than, than they need. Um, but that's not helping, you know, that's one in individual house and we need to do this on a mass scale. So how do you make a project like this happen? How do you go from being someone with an idea for your community to becoming a community organizer and making change happen on a bigger scale? Yeah, the community stuff, I mean, it started with us having an open house and then we got to know our neighbors and so we got together with our neighbors in a block party. And it's as easy as saying hi to people you walk by in your neighborhood. That kind of starts a connection and the next time you see him again you say hi. <laughs> next time you see him it would be like nice weather. <laughs> next time you know mm -hmm. it's, it's as simple as that and then you just grow it from there. It's not just Leanne and James who see the idea of building more connected communities locally or online as key to solving problems together. For example using a community garden versus a grocery store. If we were to create um, a community garden or even a rooftop garden, there's definitely more interaction there and there is a more sharing environment. When we come together and we try to solve um, these issues, that, that, that's probably, that's what probably will get us to collaborate. It depends on where you live, right? Some places that do feel isolated, some places that do feel are, are more together. I think I would say to people who maybe haven't um, had a lot of opportunities to participate in, in activism or, or being involved in their communities is um, connect with something that's really important to you and then trying to connect with people um, who also care about that same thing and, and using that as an entry point um, 
because I, I guarantee it you'll meet amazing people. I think that momentum that's built with it, um, it's kind of, it builds something special and I think people really love being part of something special. So, and mm -hmm. I think, I think of personally all the things that have brought me the most fulfillment and it's, it's being a part of something that's larger than yourself.